Okay, we're continuing to work through some examples of simple quadratic equations, and all of these are examples that can be solved by taking a square root. And what we see here is that sometimes our answers contain a radical and a number, and that's fine. We still use this same technique. We've got something squared, so we can solve it by taking the square root of each side. And when I take the square root of the left, in this case, I'm just left with x minus 3. And when I take the square root of the right, I have plus or minus the square root of 7. So I'm trying to solve for x, so I need to add 3 to isolate x, and of course I do that to both sides. On the left, they cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7 plus 3. So notice there are two solutions here. Two solutions. There's the positive square root of 7 plus 3, and there's the negative square root of 7 plus 3. And it's common just to write them both like that, to not split them up and write them separately. And it's also common to write the, the number first, the, the, write the rational number. So instead of writing them like this, it would be more commonly written like this, 3 plus the square root of 7 and 3 minus the square root of 7. But what's most common is to write them with the, the number first, but write them both at once. So I would say x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 7. And that would be my answer, or my answers, two answers. 3 plus the square root of 7 and 3 minus the square root of 7. Here's another example. x plus 8 squared equals, oh, that should be a, a 5. x plus 8 squared equals 5. Okay, this is example 11. x plus 8 squared equals 5. So let's take the square root of each side, and on the left, I just have x plus 8 after square rooting it. On the right, I have plus or minus the square root of 5. Now we'll subtract 8 from each side, and so I get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 minus 8. And again, it's typical to write the rational number first and then the radical, so I would write it like this. x is negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 5. And just remember that that really represents two solutions. Negative 8 plus the square root of 5 is one of them, and negative 8 minus the square root of 5 is the other. Okay, here's another example. 3x minus 5 squared equals 14. What we'll see here is the example involves a fraction, and that's okay. If we square root both sides here, the left side, the square rooting the left side just gets rid of the square, so I get 3x minus 5, and over here I have plus or minus the square root of 14. Now I'm trying to solve for x, and I've got rid of the squared thing. This thing was squared, and I've got rid of the squaring of it, so I just have this thing now, the 3x minus 5, but I haven't solved for x yet, so I still need to isolate the x. And so I'll add 5 to each side, and that gives me 3x over here. These have canceled out. So 3x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 14 plus 5, and then I'll need to divide by 3. And over here the, the 3's cancel out. And then I have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 14 plus 5 over 3. And again, it's typical to write the rational number first rather than, than the, the radical. So I'll write 5 plus or minus the square root of 14 over 3. Those are my answers. 5 plus the square root of 14 over 3 and 5 minus the square root of 14 over 3. Now notice we could say this. We could say x is equal to 5 thirds plus or minus the square root of 14 thirds. That would be fine too. Um, either of these is, is really fine. They're both mathematically equivalent, and they both represent two solutions. And I think most math teachers would accept either one of those. If you were told specifically to leave your answer as a single fraction, 
you would need to do that but it's it's pretty easy to see that those those two are equivalent okay example 13 is this we have 5x plus 10 squared equals 75 okay same technique here we have something squared so we get rid of the squared by square rooting it and on the left I just get 5x plus 10 and on the right I have plus or minus the square root of 75 so we want to solve for x so I'll subtract 10 from each side and I get 5x is equal to I'm gonna write this as negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 75 and then I will divide both sides by 5 and the 5's cancel and I get x is this x is negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 75 over 5 now it looks like you're done but this will actually simplify some watch this the square root of 75 I'm gonna I'm gonna work on that for just a second the square root of 75 is equal to the square root of 25 times 3 because 75 is 25 times 3 and the square root of 25 that right there the square root of 25 is just 5 so this can be written as 5 times the square root of 3 so let's take our answer for x here and write it as negative 10 plus or minus 5 times the square root of 3 over 5 now we can actually factor out a 5 here I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room here I'm gonna write this as 5 times negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 over 5 I just took this numerator here and factored it you should see that that numerator is the same if you distribute the 5 5 times negative 2 would give me negative 10 and 5 times square root of 3 would give me 5 root 3 so I factored out the 5 because that 5 very nicely cancels right there so my answer simplifies quite a bit I get x is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 so again two solutions negative 2 plus the square root of 3 and negative 2 minus the square root of 3 okay example 14 3x minus 8 squared equals 11 so let's uh, square root each side and on the left that gives me 3x minus 8 on the right plus or minus 11 so we're trying to solve for x so we need to add 8 to each side and on the left the negative 8 and the positive 8 cancel out so we have 3x equals 8 plus or minus the square root of 11 you could say plus or minus the square root of 11 plus 8 but we usually write the rational number first now we, we still need to solve for x so we'll divide both sides by 3 and we get x is equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of 11 over 3 and that can't simplify any further that's our answer or our answers and one more example 2x plus 5 squared plus 8 equals 0 so first we need to take the thing that is squared and isolate that and then we'll square root so let's subtract 8 from each side and that gives me 2x plus 5 squared equals negative 8 and if I try to take the square root of each side I get 2x plus 5 on the left and I get plus or minus the square root of negative 8 and when I end up with a negative number under my radical I stop I know there's no real number solution there so I'll just write that no real solution because we can't take negative square roots at least not yet 